in our number 10 spot we have the Lascaux Cave. This cave is located in France and it got itself the title of being a UNESCO World Heritage Site after its discovery in 1940 due to the incredible prehistoric paintings that can be seen on the walls. Of course, this became a popular tourist destination and people were jumping at the chance to see these works of art completed by the early humans. But as it turns out, breathing is not very good for the art. The carbon monoxide that visitors were expelling was beginning to cause damage to these cave paintings and of course, once they're gone, there's nothing that we can do to get them back. This led to the site being closed to the public in 1963. Now the only people allowed in are researchers and preservationists who work to make sure that the art stays for as long as possible. In our number 9 spot today we have Lake Nyos. So this isn't a place that is necessarily illegal to visit, but it definitely is a place that you should only live or even really visit at your own risk. Lake Nyos is located in Cameroon and it is different from any regular old lake because of the volcanic crater that it sits in. The magma floor releases carbon dioxide in both the water and the surrounding air, making it a less than ideal place to live and breathe. Usually the CO2 just dissipates into the air, mostly harmlessly, but in 1986 there was a limnic eruption that caused a catastrophe. A limnic eruption is very rare, but it's what happens when dissolved carbon dioxide suddenly erupts from lake waters, which then goes on to form a gas cloud. This resulting gas cloud is extremely dangerous and is capable of displacing the oxygen in the area, which of course is lethal to any living thing, which is exactly what happened in 1986. This limnic eruption caused a noxious cloud of more than 1 million tons of CO2. This ended up taking the lives of 1,700 people in the area, as well as 3,500 livestock, which made it the first known large scale asphyxiation caused by a natural event. Despite the threat of another eruption, as well as the lake's weakening walls that could result in a massive flood, people have resettled the area around the lake. I'm not gonna lie, I wouldn't risk it, which makes me wonder why these people chose to. I'm sure there's gotta be some reason though. In our number 8 spot today we have the Svalbard Seed Vault. Deep within a mountain that sits in between Norway and the North Pole sits this vault that is more than 320 feet inside. This vault holds a massive collection of seeds. Like we're talking about 890,000 different preserved seed samples from nearly every country in the world. The vault that holds these seeds is made to withstand both man-made and natural disasters and the seeds inside are meant to be kept safe so in the case of some sort of huge disaster, the seeds kept safe inside would ensure the continuation of a wide variety of really diverse food options. The door to this vault is only opened a few times a year and just a few people are allowed inside in order to deliver seeds to the shelves. In our number 7 spot today we have St Kilda. St Kilda is the most remote settlement of the British Isles and it is so isolated that it is often cut off by storms for weeks and sometimes even months at one time. That is most likely the reason as to why the previous inhabitants had developed a culture, economy, and government that was completely separate and different to their English rulers. Unfortunately, between missionaries and officials coming to the island in an attempt to change their way of life that was working perfectly fine for them, their sources of income dwindling, births not being able to keep up with the death rate, and the emigration rate combined, as well as the inevitable disease-ridden tourists coming to their island for whatever reason, things for those who once lived on the island changed drastically and it was decided that they would evacuate this island in 1930. Since then, people have tried to resettle the island, but none have permanently remained, likely because of the isolation. In our number 6 spot today, we have Surtsey Island. This island was born in 1963, and by that I mean it emerged from the sea in that year just off of the coast of Iceland after four years of being formed by an undersea volcano. A brand new island. What could we possibly do with that? Well, I'm sure humans could find a million and one ways to ruin in it, surprisingly, we decided not to do that at all. Instead, this island was protected in order to allow scientists to study how new ecosystems form and what happens when there's really no human involvement in that. This means that those who are permitted to go to the island have some very strict rules to adhere to, and it's not like just anyone is allowed to go. I mean, I couldn't go, you probably couldn't go. Well, I don't want to make that assumption, I don't know. Maybe you're a scientist. One of these rules is that there are no seeds 
allowed on the island, and no using the facilities either. The last rule is because one day when scientists found a tomato growing on the island, they were confused as to how. Turns out somebody had gone number two not too long before, and thus a new poop tomato was grown from the ground. Kind of gross, kind of cool, not gonna lie. In our number five spot today, we have Centralia. Located in Pennsylvania, this town is often referred to as one of the gateways to hell. That is due to the fire that spread in an underground coal mine underneath the town in 1962. Despite the years it's been, the fire still blazes underground, which causes the smoke and poisonous gases to rise up from the ground, not only causing an eerie appearance, but also a very serious health hazard. The temperatures can be so hot in areas that one guy's backyard was measured at 626 degrees Fahrenheit. Sometimes the fire will also burn through supports underground, which in the end turns into a sinkhole. This has caused pets, wildlife, and residents to unsuspectingly get swallowed up into the hole. In 1984, the US government ordered a total evacuation of the town, but a handful of residents refused to leave and even went to court over the right to stay in the town for as long as they live. In our number four spot today, we have Pine Gap. This location is in Australia and it is a heavily guarded and top secret facility. It is said that Pine Gap is actually a joint defense facility between the Australian and the United States governments. It is said that it is operated by both the CIA and NSA, that it is strictly off limits to anyone not involved or given high security clearance. Apparently, at first, this place was said to be a space research center, but now it has become abundantly clear that it is actually used to support the United States in both intelligence as well as military activities. If someone decided to trespass into this top secret area, it would undoubtedly put them in a whole world of trouble. Kind of like an Area 51 deal. In our number three spot today, we have La Oroya. Located in Peru, this town has a population of 30,000 people, despite the metal smelter contamination that has been seen since 1922. The smelter closed in 2009 after the company that ran it declared bankruptcy, but here's how that happened in the first place. The American-owned company ran out of money because they had to fund the environmental cleanup and the anti-pollution measures. Seems like maybe they should have chosen a different path. Seems like it didn't pay off to pollute someone else's air. I don't know. I guess they forgot that there's consequences for actions. It still remains as one of the most polluted areas in the entire world, and the toxic metals have gone on to infect the water, the soil, and the air. While it is completely unsafe to live there, people still do, and sadly, they suffer the extreme adverse effects of it. In our number two spot today, we have Mezgor. This is a location in Russia that finds its home in the Ural Mountains. This little town is top secret and is completely forbidden to any kind of visitor. This is said to be because the town is apparently home to Russia's nuclear missiles, and the rules are so strict that people aren't even allowed near the town or its vicinity. There are also rumors that suggest that this town contains Mount Yamantau, and that inside this mountain, there is the Russian government's extensive bunker, making this just another reason why this town is completely cut off to anyone who isn't a very high-ranking official. In our number one spot today, we have Wittenoom. This place in Australia is the home to a former blue asbestos mine, which is exactly what makes it one of the most contaminated places in the country. I mean this literally. The roads were paved with asbestos, even after the mine shut down in 1966. While this city was once the home to 20,000 residents, the population dropped significantly after the deaths of 300 former mine workers from mesothelioma. Apparently, it was decided that it would be too expensive to clean up the town, so instead the government just declared it unfit to inhabit and took it off the maps. While most people have since left the town, it is said that three residents refused to leave and still remain in the almost completely abandoned town. All right, guys, that has been our list for today. Thanks so much for checking it out. I've been your host today, Olivia Kozlovsky, and I'll see you next time. Bye. In our number 10 spot today, we have Pluto's Gate. This is a site that is located in what was once the ancient city of Heropolis, which resides in what is now Turkey. This site was once dedicated to the Roman god of death, Pluto, and an ancient historian named Strabo, who once went to this location, said that, quote, any animal that passes inside meets instant death. I threw in sparrows and they immediately breathed their last and fell. So, yeah.
maybe it's not really an inviting place exactly. Turns out there's more to this than just myth however. Scientists measured the CO2 concentration at this site and discovered that during the day this place might be fine, but during the night the CO2 becomes heavier than air and pools at the bottom which forms this sort of deadly lake. The reason it's fine during the daytime is because the sun is able to dissipate the gas. It is said that at dawn the CO2 concentration that was measured 40 centimeters above the floor was at 35% which would be enough to take a life within minutes. In our number 9 spot today we have the Chernobyl exclusion zone. Back in 1986 there was the tragic event of the accidental nuclear meltdown at the Chernobyl nuclear plant. The aftermath of this disaster took many lives and it also rendered the area unsafe for years to come. While some of the areas surrounding the disaster are relatively safe now, there is still an area called the Chernobyl exclusion zone which is strictly forbidden because of the radioactive contamination. You would think that the threat of a horrible death or at least some painful side effects might be enough to keep people out, but that is not the case. Throughout the years, people have continually tried to sneak into this zone to catch a glimpse at what exactly it holds. In our number 8 spot today we have Zone Rouge. This area, also referred to as the Red Zone, is an area of France that is one of the most restricted on Earth. Located in northeastern France, it is said that this chain of uninhabited areas was completely destroyed after the events of the First World War. This area contains a mass amount of both human and and animal remains along with way too many unexploded weapons that have gone on to contaminate the surrounding water and land. This has led to the French government prohibiting any kind of activity in the areas that includes any sort of agricultural or settlement. I mean, I wouldn't particularly want to risk it with an undetonated explosive, so it completely makes sense why this area would be restricted. In our number 7 spot today we have Snake Island. This island is located in Brazil and is one of the most dangerous in the entire world and that is because it is absolutely filled to the brim with snakes. It is thought that Snake Island came to be when the snakes got trapped as a result of the rising sea levels which disconnected this island from the mainland. The reason people aren't allowed to visit is obviously to protect the humans who want to go, but also to protect the snakes that live here as some of them aren't seen anywhere else in the world, likely because of the lack of human interference. There is a critically endangered species of snake called a golden lance head and on this island there are are about 4,000 of them, which is critical to the species being able to continue on. As of now, only a few select researchers and the Brazilian Navy are permitted to go to the island. In our number 6 spot today we have Area 51. This is probably one of the most famous of all of the prohibited places and that is likely because of just how many stories and conspiracy theories are surrounding it. Area 51 is a US military installation that the government insisted didn't exist until 2013. The area is said to mainly be used as a testing site by the CIA and the US Air Force because of its remote location 100 miles north of Las Vegas, but people don't buy it. People seriously believe that this site could be holding things like crashed UFOs, actual aliens, mermaids, you know, conspiracy theory stuff. At the end of the day, whether it's aliens or testing technology, the stuff that they are doing there is super secret and there's a reason it's so protected. That hasn't stopped many, many people from trying to go there over the years, however. I mean, remember a couple years back when people wanted to storm it? Yeah. Good luck. In our number 5 spot today we have Mount Omine. This mountain is the home of the Yamabushi monks and it is famous for its three tests of courage. So not everyone is banned from this place, but women sure are. The ban on women was placed in order to help remove thoughts of temptations from the monks as they practiced their strict lifestyle. Here's the thing with this rule though. There have been many females who have still gone here. They refer to the ban as a more voluntary situation. Both the temple and the local community call it a request rather than a rule or a law and the request is in order to respect their tradition as well as of course like I mentioned before to help them. In our number 4 spot today we have Morgan Island. This is a place that is also referred to as Monkey Island and this is due to the colony of about 4,000 rhesus monkeys who call this place home. The thing is though, the monkeys aren't originally from this South Carolina Island, they were actually relocated here from Puerto Rico. Basically, these monkeys were living in a sort of research center before moving to this island, but it was becoming overpopulated and some of the monkeys who carried infectious diseases were escaping, which posed quite a health and safety risk. This is when South Carolina stepped in and offered this uninhabited island as a place for these monkeys to go and continue to be researched. 
there are now laws that prohibit anyone from the island for both yours as well as the monkey's safety. In our number 3 spot today we have Bohemian Grove. Bohemian Grove is a privately owned campsite in Monterio in California and is the home to the wealthy and exclusive Bohemian Club. This club is only for some exclusive groups of men despite the few dire attempts at including women. Every year there is a two week long retreat that the club hosts on the private grounds and while there have been four women who have been invited to the club as honorary members, the women are never invited to the grove. Because of this weird ban and just the entire super strange nature of this whole ordeal, both the club and the grove are part of many, many conspiracy theories. There has been no shortage of outsiders trying to sneak into the grove to see what the heck is going on there and to see if they can get to the bottom of what this secretive club is really hiding. To be honest, there's definitely something sketchy going on with this whole thing because it really just does give off like the weirdest vibes. They also have this weird club motto that says quote, weaving spiders come not here. I'm not sure what that means, but it definitely sounds weird. Just a bunch of guys hanging out and no one else is allowed. I don't know, it's weird. <laughs> Bohemian Grove has entered the chat. They're mad at me. In our number 2 spot today we have Metro 2. During the time where Stalin was in power, it is said that he instructed that an underground secret transport system would be built known as Metro 2. This mysterious underground system is said to connect different administrative institutions and it's even rumored that it contains apartments and different technical rooms. It's sort of like a secret escape tunnel for high level officials. Of course, it's completely blocked off to outsiders or the general public and while the Moscow Metro administration denies that these tunnels even exist, there was an urban exploration group back in 1994 that claimed to have found the entrance. At this point in time, the existence of only one of the rumored four lines has been confirmed and it is called D6. In our number one spot today, we have the Fukushima exclusion zone. Back in 2011, there was the Fukushima nuclear disaster which struck Japan. Because of this horrible incident, residents located within 18 miles of the plant were urged to evacuate, similar to the Chernobyl nuclear disaster we talked about before. In fact, this meltdown and Chernobyl's are the only two events to receive a level 7 event classification on the international nuclear event scale. Because of this extreme radiation contamination, no one is allowed to enter the premises. Of course, I can't see why anyone would want to, but there are people who want to take the risk. This includes a 27 year old photographer who decided to illegally sneak into the Fukushima exclusion zone. He explained that it looked like a real life version of Fallout. Bohemian Grove. The only way you're getting to this super exclusive club is if you're a very powerful man. Bohemian Grove is a private club for the most powerful men in the US, located on a restricted 2700 acre campground on Bohemian Ave in Monte Rio, California. Every July, its members travel to the grounds for a two week retreat to relax and specifically not network. There is little known about what happens during the retreat. One thing powerful men are good at is keeping things hidden. The club Club's all male membership includes many artists, musicians, prominent business leaders, government officials, former presidents, and senior media executives. Members are also allowed to bring guests and even rent out the grounds for its off season private events. Sorry, if your interest has been sparked, good luck getting anywhere near Bohemian Grove. It's protected by security year round, with the club employing ex military personnel to secure the area. They also utilize high end equipment like thermal cameras and vibration sensing alarm systems. Some presidents that have visited are George Bush, Richard Nixon, and Ronald Reagan. Basically, there's no chance of getting in unless you have some pretty important friends. Number 9. The Coca Cola Vault Coca Cola is one of the biggest brands in the world. The corporation was founded in 1892, so the recipe has been around for over 120 years. It definitely has undergone some tweaks since the 1800s, but now it doesn't contain illegal substances, so it really only changed for the better. The secret formula is located inside World of Coca Cola in Atlanta, Georgia. While you can absolutely visit the museum itself, showcasing the history of the company, the actual vault that holds the formula is off limits. The actual recipe is located inside of a metal box inside of a 6.6 foot high vault, which is then
then further protected by a barrier, and the entire area has surveillance with armed guards. The door to the vault can only be opened by a keypad with a hand scanner. It sounds a bit extreme to take all these measures over the recipe for Coke, but with the company bringing in over $42 billion in 2022, the extra security makes total sense. I never thought about seeing the formula of Coke, but now that I know it's in a highly guarded fancy safe, I've never wanted to see something more. Number 8. Granite Mountain Records Vault The world's largest collection of genealogical records lives in a secure vault located quite literally in the mountains near Salt Lake City, Utah. The Granite Mountain Records Vault was built in 1965 by the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter day Saints. The purpose of the vault is to preserve and protect records of importance to the church, like its vast collection of family history microfilms. This is an extremely secure facility with no public access allowed. What we do know is that it's home to 2.4 million rolls of microfilm containing approximately 3.5 billion images of family history records. I guess when the Mormon church says they're a family centered faith, they aren't kidding. The church is collecting all of these microfilmed images in order to digitize them and turn them into digital records available through FamilySearch.org. Some people think there is more going on in that facility than we're being told, with conspiracy theories and suspicious surrounding the whole operation. The vault is located under 700 feet of solid mountain stone, with three tunnels and four cross tunnels inside, spanning over 65,000 square feet. They also have reinforced entrance doors that weigh 14 tons each and were said to be able to withstand a nuclear blast. These factors are what really led people to being skeptical of their operations because A, that's a lot of room for converting microfilms, B, that's a lot of security for the names of the deceased, and C, more recent images of the vault seem to show they've expanded the facility to now have five entrances instead of three. Some thoughts surrounding what else is stored there are significant artifacts, ancient relics, or even a bunker. Maybe the expansion is just for expanding operations, but who knows, maybe they really are hiding something else in that vault. At number 7, Area 51. The widely known name refers to that of a highly classified United States Air Force facility located in Nevada, which is highly prohibited to those without authorization. The fact that it's a government facility that is super off limits and highly guarded has led people to famously associate Area 51 with aliens. For decades now, the facility has been the eye of a conspiracy theory storm, with people convinced that aliens and their technology exist behind its walls. Being told you can't go somewhere or that something is a secret only makes you more interested to know about it. There have been many books, TV shows, and even plans online for massive raids trying to get a glimpse of what lies beyond the very prominent warning signs to no success. Upon looking at Area 51, it appears like the only protection against unwanted guests is the many warning signs, but apparently not a single thing goes unnoticed. Beyond the gates, cameras see every angle watching everything below. Locals say the base knows every desert tortoise and jackrabbit that hops the fence. No matter how interested you may be, only a select few have access to what goes on there, causing so many theories and speculations. Who knows, maybe it's alien experiments, maybe it's the most mundane, boring work we could ever imagine. Either way, we aren't going to be finding out anytime soon. Number 6. Cheyenne Mountain Complex It's located at Cheyenne Mountain Air Force Station, or CMAF, within the Peterson Air Force Base in Colorado Springs, Colorado. The CMAF falls under Air Force Base Command and hosts the activities of several tenant units. At the height of the Cold War, the idea of a hardened command center was thought of as a defense against long-range Soviet bombers. The Army Corps of Engineers supervised the excavation of Cheyenne Mountain and the construction of an operational center. The facility became fully operational as the NORAD Combat Operations Center in early 1967. Since it's a big old place for government stuff, Cheyenne Mountain Complex is protected and closed to the public. It's located under 2,000 feet of granite with six tunnels, each three stories tall. It's also secured against seismic activity and nuclear explosions. So basically, it's pretty high on the list of places I would like to be during a zombie apocalypse. It has two main blast doors, which are three and a half feet thick and weigh over 20 tons. These massive doors close in times of emergency and have only been shut once during 9-11. Since this complex is home to so many important operations, like a space control center and national warning facility, it's locked and guarded to the nines. That being said, since we know some of what's going on down there, it's far less desirable to visit. At number 5, Tillamook Rock Lighthouse. Located on the northern Oregon coast of the United States, also known as Terrible Tilly or just Tilly, this is one lighthouse that you can't visit. Tilly gained its nickname from the ferocious storms and difficulties facing the lighthouse keepers. Tillamook Rock rises nearly 100 feet from the sea 
and is located 20 miles south of the mouth of the Columbian River. Building the lighthouse in the first place was rough. The first person hired to take on the project was Master Mason and lighthouse builder John Trewavis. Unfortunately, John ended up being swept out to sea after falling off the rock before he could get far. After this incident, craftsmen were reluctant to work on the lighthouse, but construction foreman Charles Ballantyne stepped up with a crew of eight. Once on the rock, the men worked under horrible conditions. One day, the wind was so bad it swept away their supply house and left workers stranded for 16 days. After preparing the rock, the construction of Tilly took over 100 days to complete. Tillamook Rock Lighthouse began operations in January 1881. With a starting budget of just $50,000, Tilly cost closer to $125,000 in the end. Duty at Tillamook Rock meant isolation, horrible storms, and hazardous environment. On top of that, supplies sent to the rock were often delayed for days or even weeks. It was decommissioned in 1957 due to the extensive wear and tear. The lighthouse has bounced between a few private owners since shutting off its light. Even if you wanted to visit Tilly today, you'd have to resort to a helicopter because of the harsh waters. The rock is even off limits to its owners come time for the seabird nesting season. And number four, Dulce Base. Like Area 51, Dulce Base is the subject of conspiracy theories claiming that a jointly operated human and alien underground facility exists. Apparently, the facility lies under the Archuleta Mesa Mountain on the Colorado New Mexico border near the town of Dulce, New Mexico. On the surface, Dulce is just your average small town, so small it doesn't even have a single traffic light. According to the bizarre claims, the small town is just the tip of the iceberg. The alleged massive underground facility facility is said to be home to unimaginable experiments and technologies. For the extreme alien believers, we are all overlooking a high tech world full of aliens. According to the conspiracy theorists, the Dulce subterranean base is a 7 story compound that houses human animal hybrids, human alien hybrids, and extremely advanced technologies. It is possible that it's all made up, but if the government really was experimenting with aliens, it would make sense that they do it under a mountain near a very small town. One thing I find interesting about the Dulce base is that these theories are not new. First claims of the base's existence date all the way back to the 1930s. The rumors of alien intervention didn't start up until the 70s when a former state police trooper named Gabe Valdez documented unexplained cattle mutilations in the area. There have also been claims of UFO sightings and other paranormal activity in the area over the years. Secret aliens or not, it sounds like there's definitely something strange going on in Dulce that I don't want to look any further into. Number 3. Fort Knox I bet you've heard at least once in your life someone make a reference to something being harder to get into than Fort Knox. And there's a reason for this. Fort Knox is a United States Army installation in Kentucky, south of Louisville. The reason it's so hard to get into Fort Knox is because of the Bullion Depository, a fortified vault located adjacent to the Fort Knox Army Post. It's operated by the United States Mint Police and it's super well known for its physical security. The depository was built back in 1936 and is operated by the United States Department of the Treasury. The excessive security is in place because it's home to over half the entire country's gold reserves. Early shipments of gold totaling almost 13,000 metric tons were escorted by combat cars to the depository. In the past, it's also been home to other precious items like the Constitution of the United States and the Declaration of Independence. Fort Knox is so heavily protected and secure that the vicinity is off limits to visitors. Even the president has limitations. In fact, only one president has ever been allowed entry and that was Franklin Roosevelt back in 1943. Along with the heavy duty physical barriers and fences, the government pays $5 million annually just for security. Number 2. North Brother Island This tiny island in New York City is located smack dab in the middle of the East River between the Bronx and Rikers Island. It was the site of the infamous Riverside Hospital for quarantinable diseases. If you've ever heard of Typhoid Mary, this is the place where she spent her final days and finally succumbed to her namesake illness in 1938. After World War II, the island was repurposed as housing for veterans and their families. Then it transitioned to being a rehabilitation center for adolescent substance use, which ended up closing in the 60s amid allegations of fraud. After being home to many dark but important facilities, the entire North Brothers Island was closed permanently to the public and became a bird sanctuary. That being said, photographer Christopher Payne was able to go to the island in 2006 after being granted access by the New York City Department of Recreation. The photos he captured of the island are a little haunting, especially with its history of rehab centers 
and hospitals for the disease. These photos are interesting to see, but do not make me want to visit the abandoned island even if I could. The whole place looks like it's been taken over by, well, birds, and it's crazy that it's so close to the hustle and bustle of the city. Many people have stepped foot on the North Brother Island over the years, but now the only way to get a glimpse is through Payne's photos or if you have wings and a beak. And at number one, Nihao Island. This island has been privately owned for over a hundred years with only an estimated 170 residents. The invite only island sparked so much interest from travelers across the world due to its extreme exclusivity, commonly referred to as Hawaii's Forbidden Island. It is the westernmost main and seventh largest inhabited island in all of Hawaii. Nihao is also a crucial habitat for some endangered plant species. The island was purchased by Elizabeth St. Clair in 1864 for just $10,000, which would be the equivalent to about 170000 in 2021. Sinclair purchased it from the Kingdom of Hawaii, and the ownership has been passed down for generations currently belonging to her grandsons, the Robinson brothers. The island is off limits to all outsiders unless the brothers Bruce and Keith personally invite you for a visit. The people of Nihao are noted for their remarkable craftsmanship and mainly speak in Hawaiian. The reason they have kept the island off limits to the outside world is due to a promise made to a former Hawaiian king. The promise was to protect the island from the mainland and the rest of the world to maintain the beloved heritage, and that's exactly what they've done. To this day, Nihao has rejected the use of modern technologies and survives without electricity, running water, internet, doors, restaurants, paved roads, or cars. A modern day ancient civilization. It would be fascinating to see how they do things over on Nihao, but it's nice to know they've kept their promise for so long. Countdown, we have the tomb of Jin Shi Huang. In 1974 in China, a group of farmers came across something quite amazing. So they were digging a well when they dug out a life-size terracotta soldier. After that, archaeologists spent four decades excavating the site. They found an army of thousands of these terracotta soldiers. Experts say there's more than eight thousands of them. The soldiers are guarding the tomb of Jin Shi Huang, oh, which is off limits to everyone, including scientists. Why? Well, it's rumored that it's protected by deadly booby traps. Not only that, there's a high concentration of mercury in the tomb, which is very deadly for anyone if they entered without the proper equipment. So the tomb is off limits for any and everyone. In our ninth spot, we have Discovery Island. Discovery Island is now an abandoned park by Disney that opened in 1974. But before I go any further, make sure to give this video a big thumbs up, subscribe to our channel, comment down below, you know the drill, it really helps us out. It was located in the middle of Bay Lake by Disney World. In order to get to it, visitors would take a boat from Disney World. The park was known for having an incredible amount of exotic birds from all over the world. The attraction was basically like a miniature zoo, but in 1989 it was revealed that Disney wasn't taking proper care of the animals on the island, and the employees were caught doing some messed up things to the animals. In 1998, Animal Kingdom opened, and people just really didn't care about Discovery Island anymore. The island closed in 1999 for undisclosed reasons, and all of its animals got moved to Disney's Animal Kingdom. Now the island is just completely abandoned. Its structures are covered in nature, but it's illegal to go there. In fact, you're not allowed to get within 50 feet of its shoreline, and you'll be arrested if caught trespassing. There are a number of examples of people getting arrested for trying to get on this island. Just last year, some man was arrested after he was found camping out there. In April of 2020, Richard McGuire was arrested for visiting the island as well. Kind of makes you wonder why that area is so highly patrolled. Coming in at number 8, we have Lascaux Caves in France. The Lascaux Caves are a series of complex caves located in northwestern France. Back in the day, four teens were exploring the caves with their dog when they found a narrow entrance into a cavern. In the cavern, they discovered a plethora of prehistoric cave paintings. These paintings are anywhere from 15,000 to 17,000 years old. They mainly depict animals. In 1948, the caves were open to the public, but in 1963, they were closed. The artificial light was fading the vivid colors of these paintings. And then algae started growing all over them. So in order to preserve the history, they prevent anyone from going there. The only exception is a small number of scientists. They can go there only a few days a month in order to study the paintings. Other than that, no one else can go. Moving on to number seven, we have room 39 in North Korea. North Korea has its fair share of secrets. 
Kim Jong-un likes it that way. He doesn't want anyone knowing what he's up to. Now, room 39 is a top secret, highly guarded location inside of the Workers' Party building in Pyongyang. Journalist Kelly Olson said, and I quote, Room 39 is one of the most secret organizations in arguably the world's most secretive state. Only a few select people have access to this room. It was created in the late 1970s and no one really knows what goes on in there. But it's reported that it's very critical to the Kim family. And I'm sure you can imagine what the guards would do if you were caught trespassing or attempting to break into the room. It would not end pretty. Moving on to number six, we have Bohemian Grove. Bohemian Club is this group of rich men who meet in the Bohemian Grove in California every July. Among the attendees are US presidents, government members, and business leaders. You get the picture. Some very wealthy men. Some say that this is like a cult. Everything that goes on there is top secret. Apparently, what happens at the Bohemian Grove stays at the Bohemian Grove. In 2000, filmmaker Alex Jones and his cameraman snuck into the camp and filmed a Bohemian Grove ceremony. It was called the Cremation of the Care. Sounds very creepy. Here's a section of what he captured. Again, Midsummer sets us free. <laughs> and halfway mark with Paviglia, Italy. This island has a very, very dark past. During the Middle Ages, when the plague took the lives of thousands, this island was used as a dumping ground for the bodies. According to some reports, 50% of the island's soil consists of human remains. Then, in the 1920s, the island had a mental institution, but the hospital workers were corrupt and often conducted experiments on the patients. Then, over the years, the island has been bought and sold three times. The first two owners sold the island after witnessing some paranormal activity. It's said that the souls of the deceased haunt the island. In fact, to this day, this island is known as one of the most haunted places on Earth. Now the island is just abandoned and no one is allowed to visit it. I mean, you can, but you have to fill out a bunch of paperwork. In the end, it's not really worth it. In our fourth spot, we have Pripyat, Ukraine. I mean, it's kind of obvious why this one's on the list. So Pripyat was a city in Ukraine that had a population of 49,000 people. However, on April 27th, 1986, all residents were forced to evacuate following the Chernobyl disaster. Pripyat was the most affected by the Chernobyl nuclear disaster since they were the closest to the power plant. They were the ones most exposed to the radioactive chemicals. Due to the radiation, the city will be left untouched for thousands of more years until it's safe enough to return. But of course, there have been a number of explorers that have gone there to check out the city's ruins. But like I said, because of the radiation levels, it's deemed too unsafe to go to, and people are warned not to. In our third spot, we have the Paris Catacombs. The Paris Catacombs are a series of tunnels located under Paris, France. In the 18th century, the catacombs were created when the Paris cemeteries were full. They needed a place to bury the dead. As a result, they buried the dead underground in a series of tunnels. There's approximately 150 miles of tunnels in a maze-like fashion, making it extremely easy to get lost. Ever seen the movie As Above, So Below? Now, a portion of these tunnels are still accessible today and have attracted numerous explorers. But there's an area in the Paris catacombs that is completely blocked off from the public. It's because it's extremely easy for you to get lost with the number of pathways they have. Also, there's over 6 million people buried there, so maybe not go there. A couple of years ago, two young explorers went into the band area and went missing for three full days. Finally, the authorities, along with their team of rescue dogs, found the boys in the tunnels. Thankfully, they both survived, only suffering from hypothermia. It could have ended much worse. In our second spot, we have Pluto's Gate in Turkey. Back in the day, it was believed that anything that entered this area would be killed by the god Pluto himself. On a number of occasions, animals like bulls would be led into this cavern. They would never make it back out alive. As a result, people were terrified to go anywhere near there. But a couple of years ago, it was discovered what was actually causing this. Scientists noticed that at night, the CO2 concentration would become heavier in the air. 
CO2 is not normally toxic, but in high concentrations, it is, and will starve the body of oxygen. So yes, if you go there, the level of CO2 is so strong that you could die from asphyxiation. It's super dangerous, and as a result, people are banned from going there. And in our number one spot, we have Wyndham, Australia. Located northeast of Perth, Australia, Wyndham is considered one of Australia's deadliest towns. This is because of its blue asbestos problem. In 1937, blue asbestos was discovered in the city's gorge. Years later, miners were unearthing tons of asbestos from the ground. It wasn't until 1978 that the government started pushing people out of their homes. They realized how deadly it was for them to be living there. It was increasing their risk for cancer, and in some cases, people were already developing lung cancer just from living there. Now, it would cost the town about $2.43 million to get rid of this asbestos problem, so instead of doing that, they just shut down the town completely. In 2006, the government turned off power to the town and had its name removed from maps and road signs. In fact, all roads that once led to this town are now closed off. If you do choose to enter this town, you'll find tons of huge warning signs advising you to turn back. Starting off this countdown, we have the Stairway to Heaven. The Stairway to Heaven, or the Haiku Stairs, is a very steep hiking trail that was closed in 1987. It was closed because of lack of maintenance of the trail and it was deemed unsafe. It's considered one of Hawaii's most dangerous trails, but that didn't stop 18 year old Daylin Pua from hiking out there. On February 27th, 2008, 15, Daylin went out for a hike. He had previously told his grandmother, who he was visiting, that he wanted to do so, but she warned him against it. Also, you can get charged if you do trespass, but that didn't deter Daylin. On that day, he told his grandma he was going out for a hike, but she didn't think he would dare to go there. She was wrong. The last time anyone saw him was around 11 a.m. when he sent a photo to his family of him at that location he never returned home. Of course, there are a number of theories as to what happened to him. Maybe he fell while on the hike, since the area is dangerous. But then again, his body or bones were never found. Another theory is that he was kidnapped or killed by someone. In the photo he sent to his family, it said you can see a man lurking in the foliage. Was this his killer? Sadly, we might never solve this case. Coming in at number nine, we have Snake Island. With a name like that, who would even want to visit it? And as you probably guessed, it is covered in snakes. This island is apparently home to around 4,000 snakes, most of them being golden lancehead vipers, aka one of the deadliest serpents in the world. It's said that this type of viper can grow up to 18 inches long, and it's so poisonous that one bite can kill you within an hour. As a result, the Brazilian government has banned anyone from ever going there. If you do, well chances are you won't make it back alive. Legend goes that a fisherman arrived at the island in search of bananas, but was found days later in his boat dead in a pool of his own blood. Then from 1909 to the 1920s, a family lived on the island to run the lighthouse. But according to another legend, the entire family was found dead after a group of snakes came into their home and attacked them. So like I said before, you don't ever want to go to this island. Moving on to number 8, we have Area 51. Of course this had to be on the list. Area 51 is a top secret government facility that is illegal for the public to visit. Anyone that does try to trespass can be charged, arrested, or even shot to death. This is what happened to a man in 2019. On January 28th, the man attempted to get into Area 51. He was then chased down by some cars for eight miles. When he got out of his car, he was shot dead. Another case would be the two YouTubers that were arrested in September of 2019 after they tried to sneak into Area 51 and were caught recording the premise. I know we all want to know what really goes on in there, like if they got aliens or whatnot, but curiosity killed the cat. Just saying. In our seventh spot, we have the Devil's Hole. With a name like that, maybe it's best you don't visit it. So the Devil's Hole is located in a national wildlife refuge in Nevada. You can tour the area, but access to the Devil's Hole itself is off limits. They have a sign and a fence guarding the area, and the sign reads as so. Due to the scientific importance of this area and its fragile nature, unauthorized entry is prohibited. Yes, they want to protect the ecosystem, but also 
also, it is so dangerous to enter there. So Devil's Hole is like a little hole of water. When you dive in, it's filled with complex underwater caverns. Back in 1965, one night a group of four friends decided to hop the fence and explore the Devil's Hole. It was Paul, David, Bill, and Jack. Jack was on the lookout while the three dove in, but Paul never resurfaced. As a result, David and Bill both went back under to look for him, but then David never resurfaced. To this day, their bodies have never been found. Moving on to number six, we have Ramry Island. Tourists are banned from ever visiting this island, because chances are your vacation will take a deadly turn if you decide to go there. This island is home to thousands of saltwater crocodiles, and they weigh around 2,000 pounds. Even the small ones pose a threat to humans. They have the capability of killing someone twice their size. On top of that, they are highly aggressive and will attack anyone that enters their habitat. In fact, the most number of fatalities in a crocodile attack took place at Ramry Island. In 1945, British soldiers drove the Japanese fighters off the main area of the island, forcing them to flee into the marshy area surrounding the island. One problem, those marshes were filled with hungry crocodiles. As a result, 500 soldiers were killed by these crocodiles. So yeah, maybe don't go to this island unless you wanna be crocodile dinner. And of course, there's a number of stories of tourists going to this island and then being attacked and killed by these beasts. We're now at our fifth and halfway mark with Bouvet Island. Now here's the thing with Bouvet Island. You can visit it, but it would be a death wish if you did. Bouvet Island is extremely isolated and it's almost completely covered by a glacier. Its nearest inhabited land is 1,600 miles away. One way to get there is by boat, but it would take very long and you would be facing extreme weather conditions while doing so. As a result, most expeditions are done by helicopter. Even then, if the weather suddenly changes, you're basically screwed because the island is so remote and far away from other pieces of land. But in 1964, a lifeboat was found abandoned at this island. How did it get there? How could this little boat survive crossing the southern ocean? It's a mystery that still baffles many. But also, where did the passengers of the boat go, if they had any? We got no clue, just a couple of theories. And at number four, we have Vortex Spring. Vortex Spring is known for having pretty complex diving caves, but only those that have a diving certificate or are accompanied by an experienced diver can go there by themselves. In the 1980s, 13 people died in the vortex. There's one area in the underwater caves that are considered so deadly that it's blocked off, and people are prohibited from entering there. It's got this creepy warning sign with the Grim Reaper, and it's often locked with a gate. It's just far too easy for people to get lost and drown in there. But that didn't stop Ben McDaniel. On August 18th, 2010, Ben was seen entering the water near the caves and was never seen again. This case is quite strange, like there's a lot of pieces to it. Some say he faked his death because he owed the IRS a lot of money, and also he had a failed marriage, so maybe this was his way of starting over. Or Ben really did get lost in the caves and drowned, but his gear or body have never been found. In our third spot, we have the Bolton Strid. The Strid near Bolton Abbey is said to be the most dangerous stretch of water in the world. Just by looking at it, you wouldn't even think it's dangerous. I mean, the current isn't even that fast. But below the water surface are strong undercurrents that will toss you back and forth against the sharp, jagged rocks until you die. It's also fairly deep and it could just suck you down until you drown. In fact, it has a 100% fatality rate. Everyone that has gone or fallen in have never made it out alive. Their bodies also have never been found. There are a number of stories of people trying to leap across the river only to slip and fall in. In one case, there was a newlywed couple visiting the Strid. However, upon trying to cross the Strid, the bride fell in and the groom fell in also trying to save her. As a result, there are a number of warning signs all around the area trying to warn people of the Strid's dangers. But of course, a lot of people ignore the signs since the Strid is so deceiving and looks pretty safe. In our second spot, we have North Sentinel Island. The reason why you can't visit this island is because it is home to a tribe. 
that will kill anyone who dares to intrude on their land. They live their own life completely isolated from the rest of the world. In fact, they still live a hunter gatherer lifestyle. But a man named John Allen believed that with the power of God, he would be able to convert them to Christianity and help them. He believed that this island was Satan's last stronghold on earth. So in November of 2018, he headed out to the island. Now, the people that took him there knew of the dangers and really, really, really didn't want to, but he was so insistent that they finally gave in. In fact, they were later arrested for doing so. John's first attempt at making contact with them didn't go as planned. As soon as he stepped foot on the island, several men came charging at him, firing arrows. So he fled. But on November 16th, he tried again. He got a fisherman to drop him off alone, and that was the last time anyone had ever seen him. When people went back there for him, they saw the tribe members dragging his dead body with a rope. And in our number one spot, we have the secret cave. It was the evening of August 17th, 2005, and five friends were having dinner together. They were Scott McDonald, J. Blake Donner, Jennifer Lynn Galbraith, Ariel Singer, and Stephen Hunley. While eating, the group got to talking about this secret cave, which was a legend where they were from. It's all about this cool secret cave slash hangout spot. Rumor has it, that's where human sacrifices were made, etc. But of course, no one thought it was a real cave. That's when Jennifer said that it was real and that she had been there before. The friends, not really believing her, asked her to bring them there. And so they did. So basically, up in the mountains by Brigham Young University, there was this small opening to a cave. The entrance was in the shape of a Y. But in order to get to the secret hangout spot, Jennifer told them they would have to dive down one area through this underwater tunnel to the other side, where there was an air pocket. The tunnel was 15 feet, and the gap they would have to swim through was 20 inches wide. So it was just enough for people to squeeze through. On top of that, someone had put a rope in the water so you could just pull yourself underwater with. So that's what the four of the friends did. Stephen Hunley decided to stay back. He waited for the group for about an hour, and then he decided to call for help. And when police arrived, they were horrified at what they saw. So it seems like the group of friends successfully managed to get to the other side, but they couldn't make it back. The police ended up pumping out the water so that they could enter. And that's when they found all four of the friends' bodies stacked up against each other. It seems as if the person leading, who was Jennifer, got stuck on the way out and then she drowned. It would then be impossible to swim over her. So then the second person that went swimming was stopped at Jen's body and they couldn't get back out because then the third person was coming in. So everyone was just blocked in this small tunnel. Slowly but surely, all of them drowned in this small dark cave. For safety reasons, this cave is no longer accessible. Coming up in our number 10 spot, we of course have Chernobyl. Chernobyl is a place in Kyiv, Ukraine that is most known for its accidental power plant explosion that polluted the whole city of Pripyat with radiation in 1986. Apparently Chernobyl is one of the most impressive places for urban exploration, even though it is not encouraged. There is mixed opinion as to whether the radiation level is fully safe there as people in the towns near it have seen a life expectancy decrease and have experienced other health concerns that could be pointed to the radiation. The complete cleanup isn't projected to be finished until 2065. I will be 75. So personally, I wouldn't recommend it, but go at your own risk. Apparently exploring the abandoned town of Pripyat and walking through the Chernobyl exclusive zone really gives you the feeling of stepping into a post-apocalyptic world. I'm truly a massive Hunger Games fan, so this would be rather tempting to me. If you're enjoying this video so far, please go ahead and smash that like button as it really helps us out. In our number nine spot, we have Bulgaria's Booz Lugza. Okay, honestly, if I felt so inclined to be adventurous and possible risk being arrested. Don't know if I ever would feel that way, but say I was going through a quarter life crisis and wanted to do something crazy, I would definitely visit the Booz Lugza. This place looks like a spaceship. It probs is. And they fooled the country into thinking that it was a place for the communist party when it was active. The people of Bulgaria literally call it the flying saucer. So I think all signs point to it clearly being from an alien planet. In 1868, it was the place of the 
final battle between Bulgarian rebels and forces of the Ottoman Empire. Inside, it is completely destroyed, but if you're able to imagine what it could have been like before it was destroyed, then you could probably see that it truly does check out as a spaceship. In our number eight spot, we have the Bangar Fort. The Bangar Fort is a 16th century fort built in the Rajasthan in India. Apparently, this place is not banned to visitors during the day, however, it is strictly forbidden at night. Why is it forbidden? Well, because it is believed to be the most haunted place in India. It has so many legends surrounding it, tales of ghosts and curses, and there's even one around trespassers at night. It is said that if you wander inside at nighttime, you don't ever leave. It's true, that's a real legend. The ghosts probably eat your soul, no big. <laughs> But the locals believe it, as many have gone in and then have fully disappeared afterwards. Well, that's so terrifying, but man, we've got to get a ghost hunter or someone to at least go near it at night and see if they pick up on anything. That would honestly be a really fun video to watch. In our number seven spot, we have Heard and McDonald Island. This is a closed island, but do people still go urban exploring there regardless? Yes. It is not recommended though, because this island is so remote that it would take a two week minimum sail in order to get to the closest landmass. It's an Australian territory island, but it is located between Antarctica and Madagascar. On the island, you will find plenty of cold climate animals, including penguins, seals, and marine birds. It's also not recommended for exploring because of the huge lava flow coming from the island's volcano, and also it's, you know, poor weather conditions. Unless you have some sort of fantasy to be near a volcano that could possibly erupt one day soon, I think it's probs best to stay away from this island. In our number six spot, we have the Island of Snakes. Yeah, you heard that right. There is an island in Brazil that is an island filled with snakes. Ooh. Don't know why no one has capitalized on this movie concept yet. The island is called Ilha da Quimada Grande. Whew, Melissa, can't believe I got that one. Very hard to pronounce. This is honestly not a place you want to try to go urban exploring. You could seriously get hurt. The only people allowed on the island are researchers and trained snake experts. And even they have to have doctors with them when they go, a rule set forth by the Brazilian government. These are not just your regular garden snakes. Nope. They are some of the world's deadliest with venom that can melt your flesh. Yeah, that's right. Lovely. It's definitely best that you stay away. In our number five spot, we have Pravsika Brana. The Pravsika Brana is a very famous Czech Republic arch. It was available to the public until 1982 when it became forbidden for anyone to visit. Why? Well, because all of the visitors that were coming to see it were causing a bit of wear, essentially, and it was increasing the likelihood of the structure collapsing over time. So to reduce the likelihood, tourists were cut off. Of course, they can still view it, they just can't go on it. It's not guaranteed that it won't eventually collapse, but the government hopes that it will at least give us more time with this beautiful structure. Well, that's a good reason to not go urban exploring here. Let's keep this arch standing as long as possible. In a number four spot, we have the tomb of Shenxi Huang. I mean, the pictures of this site, they're unreal. But unfortunately, this place is off limits to everyone. Yes, all of you urban explorers out there, don't even bother. It is forbidden by the Chinese government as they are trying to preserve their cultural heritage and pay respect to the man buried there. Also, apparently there's nothing we can do technology-wise to prevent the tomb's destruction if it's excavated right now. So that's another reason to limit the amount of visitors until that happens. It makes sense, although quite sad, as this place looks epic. There is a reproduction of Shinshi Huang's army, known as the Terracotta Army, made of clay. Intensely amazing. This place was a massive discovery that was only found in 1974. Hopefully, it will be open to the public in my lifetime. We hope. In our number three spot, we have the Global Seed Vault. In Norway, there is a place that is known as the Global Seed Vault. Its nickname is the Doomsday Vault. This is because it is a place that was built to store 100 million seeds from all over the world to restore the plant kingdom in case something horrible happens to the planet, such as you know explosions, earthquakes, etc. The vault was created in 2008 and was made to store the seeds for 200 years. It's definitely something I would want to see up close as it's pretty cool that this is one place where politics seem to not exist and the countries of the world have come together for this cause. Even North Korea. Of course, going inside
inside is forbidden, and honestly, I wouldn't want to anyways to make sure the seeds are safe. I wonder if they have stored some soil too, as I have definitely heard that our soil is becoming more and more contaminated, and we might need a less contaminated soil in the future. So hopefully they did. In our number two spot, we have Poveglia. The Poveglia is a small island that is located between Venice and Lido, and it is strictly forbidden to everyone. But perhaps for a very, very good reason, as it certainly has a bloody past. It used to be a plague quarantine station that has had over 160,000 infected people, many who ended up passing away on the island. It is said that about 50% of the island's soil is really just the remains of all the humans that passed away there. Yikes. I'm surprised that this too hasn't been made into a movie yet. Many moons after the plague, the island was then turned into a mental hospital before being shut down completely. Definitely a place you may not want to go exploring anyway. In our number one spot, we have the Chichen Itza. Okay, I know this one is not banned from the world to see. In fact, I have seen it in person myself and it's incredible. A magical place that I would recommend to everyone. However, it is forbidden to climb. Before 2006, people used to climb the pyramid, but after a fatal accident, the government decided to ban all tourists from climbing up it. Honestly, this is probably a good thing because it's quite steep and I don't know, I wouldn't have the balls myself to climb it anyways. <laughs> Although I am known to be a little bit of a physical wimp. Mentally, I'm as strong as David Goggins. Okay, no one's as strong as him. <laughs> Stay hard.